are a Lebanon resident and you've checked in with your clerks, I hope that you've done that. Please be sitting in this column over here. Raise your hand, Lebanon folks. There we go. Nice. If you're in Northburg, you're going to be sitting right down here. Please make sure you do have your cards that you've checked in with your clerks. And the same for Berwick over here. Um, it's going to take us a little bit more tonight to make sure we count our votes easily. So please be patient with us as we go through the process. And I think we're pretty much ready to get started. So Elva, why don't we begin? Welcome to the district budget meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. present, discuss, and ultimately approve the school district budget articles in preparation for the district referendum vote on June 11th, 2024. In a moment, we will call to elect a moderator for this evening, but before we do that, I'd like to provide a broad overview of the development of the budget process. The budget development process is very comprehensive in nature. The first portion of that process begins in early fall with administrators and directors working to build school-based and department-based budgets. This part of the process takes time and as student enrollment, facilities, supply needs are taken into consideration and compiled as part of the larger budget. Simultaneous to this step, the district-based administrators work on those portions of the budget that are district-oriented, such as tuition to Sanford Regional Technical Center, fuel and energy rates, insurance rates, overall facility needs, and staffing, as a few examples. From this work, the full budget is compiled and brought forward to the Board of Directors for their consideration. Each school and department of the budget is presented to the board and discussed in detail as part of that process. For those of you who were in the audience at the budget workshops and meetings, you were able to witness the level of detail, questioning, and consideration that went into the final budget, which is being presented this evening. Please note that the board of directors worked very hard to bring forward a budget that not only addresses student learning and needs, but also is responsible to the taxpayers in our three communities. This was not an easy task, and ultimately what is presented to the community this evening is a collaboration between building and department-based leaders, district leaders, and board members. This means that while hard decisions were made throughout the last several months, they are decisions that again address student learning and supports and are responsible to our taxpayers. In conclusion, the overall proposed budget is 49,1797, which is a 7.48% um, impact to taxpayers. Now we'll move on to the first order of our business, and that's to call the election of a moderator. May we have a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Thank you. Um, for, let's see, any nominations? <coughs> Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of Jeff Day, please. Uh, Point of order. Discussion? Thank you. Any discussion? I'd also like to nominate Robert. Okay. Any other discussion? Do we have a second on the nomination? Yeah. I'll okay, so we have two nominations, one for Jeff Day and one for Robert Travers. So we will um, have a vote. This part could take a little while, as Sue mentioned, so we're going to, um, for those in favor of Jeff Day, please hold up a card. I like taking pictures of my 
Tu peux me donner ça. For those in favor of Robert Travers, Mr. Day, would you please come forward? Good evening. Good evening. I just need you uh, to do the oath of the moderator. So um, just repeat after me, please. I. I, Jeffrey Day. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties. That I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties. Of moderator. Of moderator. At the district budget meeting to the best of my ability. At the district budget meeting to the best of my ability. Do you mind signing? I do. Thank you. Good evening. So, uh, as hopefully you all know, my name is uh, Jeff Day, and it's my uh, pleasure to uh, serve serve you tonight, uh, be the moderator for this meeting. Just a few um, things before we get going. I'll be using the main moderator's manual, the 2021 uh, edition, with the following modifications. Uh, members of the MSAD 60 administrative team who are not um, registered voters in the district will be allowed to speak to uh, address questions and provide information uh, to the meeting. And, um, all registered voters in our towns may participate and vote. Questions should be directed to the moderator me. When asking a question, Please state your name and your town so we, we know where you're from. And we have uh, microphones. And I guess we're going to have people. We're not doing runners. Take it. Yeah. So if, if so, you will be the runner. You will come down. <laughs> Little did you know. Um, in order to ensure everyone has an opportunity to ask questions, uh, please do not repeat the question allow others to have an opportunity to speak. Uh, I will allow two questions from an individual and then we'll need to ensure someone else has an opportunity. And uh, please do not interrupt um, those who are speaking. And questions should be uh, specific to the current article being addressed. To minimize confusion, there will be no amendments to uh, an amendment. We'll address the amendment, and if it passes, fine. If it doesn't pass, fine. But we're not going to amend amendments. And if you feel there's been adequate discussion and answers provided, you may move the question. Residents will have received your voter cards. I see everyone's done that. So please use them when voting. And also note that uh, Article Number 13 will be a written ballot. If we keep these general guidelines in mind, I'm sure we'll have a productive evening. 
If there are no concerns, we will begin the review, discussion, and voting on each article. Roger, would you like to um, make any more additional comments, or you all say? Okay, thank you. All right, I'm going to read each article, and then uh, we will uh, get into discussion. Article number one, to see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for regular instruction. School board recommends $19,205,528. Do I hear a motion? I have a motion that we move the recommendation of the school board. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? A second. Discussion, please. Hello, uh, Jonathan Hall um, from North Borough. Um, I'd like to propose an amendment to Article 1, Regular Instruction, um, uh, in the amount of $300,000 uh, from $19,205,528 to $19,505,528 with the intent and knowing that the school board and the board of directors Superintendent uh, can spend that money in any way that they would like. Um, I am making the amendment with this public intent that we um, restore. Point of order. There needs to be a second for discussion. There's been a second already. Okay. Can I continue? Please, yes. Uh, with the intent of restoring one cut um, art teacher, um, one cut PE teacher, and one cut library um, teacher and one cut STEAM teacher, as well as one world language teacher to be restored at the high school, and those other four teachers are to be restored at Northburg Elementary and Eric um, L. Knowlton School. Thank you. And just so that everyone um, was following along, uh, there is, um, it's, it's the role of the board uh, of directors to determine how uh, the money is spent. So um, if the money gets added back in, based if the, if the motion passes, the 300,000, uh, the school board will make a determination as to how that money is actually spent. Okay. Okay. Yes, and, and, uh, and hopefully everybody heard the, the uh, intent of how, or the request as to how that money would be uh, spent. Please do. So uh, the, the motion is to um, restore um, a phys ed teacher, a um, art teacher, a library um, teacher, and a STEAM teacher to the Eric L. Knowlton um, Borough School and the um, North Borough Elementary School as well as one world language teacher to um, Noble High School that was cut in this proposed budget. Thank you. Any more discussion? Looks like you were very succinct and captured Anyone else has questions? All right, so um, we're going to vote on the uh, amendment at this time. Uh, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Are you the official count? I guess we're going to Oh, we are.
224 in favor, 64 opposed. So the <laughs> so the amendment passes. Now we'll vote uh, on the amended amount, and uh, which uh, let's just make sure I'll, I'll read this again and with the amended amount. And the uh, administration will keep me uh, honest here. So Article 1, to see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for regular instruction, the amended amount is 19,505,528. And the gentleman down front, do you agree with him? Okay, thank you. Do I hear a motion? Okay. I have a motion. Second. 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 And a second. All right. Discussion, please. <coughs> Seeing no discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Thank you. I don't have to count everyone. <laughs> opposed? Yeah, so opposed. <clears throat> yeah, the motion, the motion carries. So just for clarification, my clarification, the folks right back up in here, uh, I'm assuming since I see cards there the guys in, in North Berwick, yes? yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right, Article 1 passed. As amended. As amended, yes, correct. Thank you. All right, Article number 2. To see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for special education, School board recommends nine million one hundred sixteen thousand seven hundred and eleven dollars. School board's recommendation. I have a motion and a second. Thank you. Any discussion? Can't hear what was said. So the motion was. There was a motion made. It was uh, seconded, and I've asked for a discussion. Article number two. To accept that written was the motion? Yes. Yes. And if we have discussion down here? Yeah. Mark Allison Lebanon. Good evening, Mark. Hi, Jay. Okay. Uh, I see a, a significant increase. Can I ask why? Sure. Yes. I think that's, yep. easy, you know, if I know why, then I'll have it. Yeah, Audrey, please, please go ahead. All right, so a couple of things. The first one is that you'll notice physical therapists, occupational therapists, and our school psychological providers 
Um, all of those seem, as you look at them, in fiscal year 24, they were not included in the budget, and that's because they were in local entitlement. And local entitlement, for those um, of you that are um, not familiar with that, it is a uh, federal grant that, that we receive as part of our special education process, and we receive about, it, it, it's roughly 900,000 every year. Um, and we often put, um, have our staff, some of our line items for our staff in those, uh, in the grant, and sometimes we move them out. Um, the challenge with local entitlement is that you have to ensure that you are spending the same amount per, per student or for our students every single year. So that's why there's a fluctuation. Sometimes you'll see staff go out of our local budget and into local entitlement and then come out of local entitlement and go into the regular budget. So those are the primary large um, large contributors to this line item increasing. And so it basically is coming from entitlement to our paying for it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And they weren't, these are not new positions. These are positions that we've had for many years uh, that are just, that are swinging back into our budget. And they're basically needed for the special education? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'll just make one clarification as well. Um, in fiscal 24, we had basically two years worth of this grant funding available to us. I, I, as Audra mentioned, the local budget has to spend the same, same amount or more per student every year. Um, and we budget in our local budget staff, but during those post-COVID couple of years, we had trouble hiring special education staff, both teachers and techs. And uh, therefore, we, some of the things that we had budgeted in grant funds were paid for with local funding so that we could obtain that per student expenditure. So in 24, we had two years of grant to spend, and in fiscal 25, we'll have only the one. So we had some extra grant funding this current year. Additional questions? Emily Cook, North Berwick. So, forgive me if this is a silly question, but so the numbers, the increases and decreases that I see associated with the various salaries and wages under the special education um, article, for example, the $216,000 plus increase for director, assistant director, MHA teaching director, is there an additional uh, position being added here, or is that is that related to the same exact thing that you were just talking about? Okay. And so, what of these decreases do directly relate to decreases in actual staff? We do have um, a decrease in staff as far as the, one of our assistant director positions was um, taken out of the budget for the upcoming school year. We also have, um, you know, every year we look at students and student enrollment and what students need supports. Um, so there are some fluctuations with that sometimes as far as educational technicians um, and teachers. Well, I just know that, so I have a child with special needs, so I just know that there's, in, it's very, very difficult. I mean, my son has very significant special needs, so he's almost guaranteed a one-on-one. -on -one. Like, he can't function without a one-on-one. -on -one. But there's a lot of kids that need support that are literally just pushed into the regular classrooms that it's, the teachers are struggling significantly. So how, how are we eliminating some of these ed tech positions and or you know teacher positions, which is what it looks like? So just I just I'm trying to make sure that I'm understanding correctly. Like the sure. teacher salaries are going so, down, but yeah. maybe that's not the case. Okay. So for the teacher salary, that is particular to MHA, so Mary Bird Academy, and due okay. to enrollment at that school, there's one teaching okay. position less for next year than okay. there is currently. All the other um, teaching positions remain uh, the same as as this current year. Okay. Um, yeah. And so, as far as ed techs, they're in, as I'm looking at it, I don't see a decrease. You're right, I see an increase okay. there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, no. I guess I am as well. All right, so. Your name and your Kaylee Waters Berwick, thanks. Are any of the 
special ed teachers actually taking a pay cut, or is it all due to like schools closing and the stuff like that? Because like you said, like, I agree, there's definitely, I have a student who's in full-time special ed, but I have also students that have needed one-on-one -on -one <clears throat> that not necessarily that that was always available, so. Sure. <laughs> so, um, I heard IEP coordinator in there too. So yeah. we had a shift in an IEP coordinator. Um, one of our IEP coordinators moved to the director of NHA this this summer. So we hired another um, IEP coordinator at a different salary rate, just based on the contract and experience and schooling. So that's some of the difference with that. But we still have two IEP coordinators going into the fall. Okay, because I also had yeah. heard a lot about um, contracts not getting renewed with EdTechs and stuff like that due to budget issues. At least that was. I don't know how much of that had to do with like. I'm, there, I'm not as educated sure. on that. But. There are three um, educational technician positions that were, um, were specific to um, the middle school, the literacy lab, and the math lab, and those positions are not continuing, but those were not special education positions, so you won't see them in this article. So are they, okay, that would be a different article? Yes. Okay, yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Which Maybe uh, ask your question if you have a question. So my, my question, my question was on the middle school specifically for the math and or literacy um, I guess they're not special ed teachers but those classes I know they are being cut so I guess if that's not a part of this article I can come back up but it was, it was article article one. One. so would that have passed them to not be cut Okay. Thank you. Um, how many? Could, could you state your name, please? Uh, hi, my name is Xavier Durand, and I'm from Levin, Maine. I'm a student at Noble Middle School. How many um, special ed teachers would be getting cut? How many special education teachers are being cut? Is that your question? Yes. There are no special education positions being cut for no. teachers. Except for the MHA, which is Mary Hurd Academy, which is part of our high school. Okay, thank you. Yes. Hello. Hello. I am Xavier Devlin. <laughs> Pull that right down. There you go. I'm Xavier Devlin, um, and I am from Berwick, Maine. I'm as a student at Noble Middle School. I have many friends in this special education program and know how much they rely on it in order to learn and pass. Um, I just wanted to comment on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Uh, my name is Christy Hayes, Devlin from Berwick. Uh, my son, Xavier, who just spoke, actually is not in the special education department, doesn't receive special education services, uh, to be clear, but the literacy and um, math class are being cut in the middle school. Are we adding any additional staff to cover the work that they have been doing within the special education program? Because there is a significant overlap. Yep. How are their positions and their roles in supporting students going to be handled without those positions within the special education program? So, Audrey, can you just clarify that well, that was part mm -hmm. of Article one. I understand that yes. was Article 1. I'm wondering, within the special education program, we are not adding staff, correct? We're not adding staff, correct. So anything that was handled by those regular education positions of math and literacy lab will now be handled by special educators who don't have that support for students. Are, is there additional support within the special ed program that is being created, or how will special education teachers, ed techs, et cetera, manage those additional needs for students who have those math and language issues. They're going to handle it like we have con uh, consistently handled that through resource support um, and specialized instruction. Uh, specialized instruction, would that fall under the special education yes. uh, moniker? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I know what you're getting. You want me to answer the question from Article 1, and I will certainly do no, that. No, I'm wondering if there's additional support yes. for okay. special education. Yes. I'm not asking okay. about Article 1. I just knew that would yeah. create a new need. So I'm, I'm going to answer part of it based on number, Article number 1. When um, there were some proposed um, cuts to the Noble Middle School, and part of it were the three educational technicians, the board reinstated three positions, teaching positions, 
um, so that we are going to be ad addressing the literacy um, and math supports as multi the, our multi-tiered systems of support. So that will handle very that will handle those um, you know anybody I, I identified or looked at for needing some ad additional support in those areas that may not necessarily be a special education piece. For the special education piece, that falls again to specialized instruction and the instructors are special education teachers and support. And do they have space for that increased workload? They do. The, the special education teachers or the other teachers, which... Understood, but there's the, overlap, but I do expect yeah. that the special education teachers will have an increase in their, in their load based upon losing those resources. So that's they'll, what I'm just wondering if that's an additional workload. They'll have an increase if a student is identified as needing a special education instruction, and then they, they will um, you know, go through that process. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> could you comment on um, Article 1 and how many regular educators um, were cut out of that article that we voted for? Since that seems to be confusing for a lot of people. Sure, please. Go ahead. So you want um, teachers? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me just get my notes here. I have a document. Okay. So um, we are down 11 teaching positions in Article 1 throughout the district. Two of those positions were a leave of absence and a retirement. Four were from our ESER funding, which we received um, as part of the COVID funds. Uh, one is the world language position that was just um, recommended to be placed back in the position. Um, and uh, a few, two I have as being based on the consolidation, which has been amended, so those positions are not there. I mean, not in this portion of being cut. Um, and then there were three educational technicians from Noble Middle School. Thank you. Yes, and the four Noble Flex. Yeah, and that was also from ESER, the, the COVID funding that we had received. So maybe just, just so we're clear, can you, uh, based on the amended article number one, what is the, the number of positions that uh, are being reduced? down to eight. So there are eight positions that are uh, being um, eliminated from the, uh, the budget. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I think I'd ask you to come to the, uh, the mic, please. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the presentation. My name is Sarah I'm from North Berwick. Um, I'll be honest, I'm one of those people that votes for you guys and then prays that you vote the way that I want you to, and I appreciate all that you do. But I wanna, I'm just trying to understand. So the amendment for um, what we've been discussing, which obviously we weren't 100% clear on, we're losing teachers. We voted, obviously we will pay more to keep them. Uh, 300,000, you eventually can do what you want with it. Granted, he did put a stipulation to try to at least keep some of the job, but what you're telling us is that you still possibly might decline us that. Is that correct? So is that like that is your right? I just yeah. want to confirm so that, that is your right to do that. So I would just ask the administration to clarify. Um, like he's, we just voted for three hundred thousand more dollars with the stipulation that we would like you to keep those teachers, and you are telling us that you still might not keep those teachers. That's not what this. I'm going to clarify this and say that is not what this is about. The bigger question was about how many across the district staffing across the district um, positions have been either eliminated based on programming or based on the fact that we had funding that we no longer have for. So there are two separate issues. Yes, there were staff that um, were impacted by the consolidation, and that was the motion and the amendment that passed. So those, um, and with the intention of using those um, funds to support the world language and the um, increased art, PE, STEAM, and library. But regardless of those intentions, you still might choose not to do that. That the correct. board, um, right? I just want to, yeah, yes. yeah, yes. Right. Thank you. yes. The board has to make that decision. 
Why are we repatriated? So um, I'm going to ask, I'm gonna ask um, if, if you have a uh, question, just come to the mic. Let's uh, go to the question over here, please. Hi, yes, I'm Joe Forte, North Norway. Just a quick question, uh, Audra. Uh, so you said eight positions were what we were losing. Were those teacher positions? Were teachers and ed techs? Uh, were they all full time or part time? They were teaching positions, yes. Okay, and so as, again, some were because of a leave of absence, okay. some were because of enrollment, some were because of a retirement. So, yeah. And then how many ed tech positions? Three. Three, total yes. across the district? Yes, at this point in time, yes. If we're unable to fill some, that impacts, but those are not intentional cuts. Those are unable to fill. All right, thank you. Yep. Over here, please. Hi, I'm Robert Travers from Lebanon. I'd like to make a motion to call the question. Thank you. So, um, so technically, you don't have to make a motion to call the question. You can just call the question. So you're okay with that, yes? Okay, thank you. All right. Um, so um, the question has been called. I'm going to allow one more question. Thank you. Um, I'm actually not a member of the towns any longer, uh, so, but I so, am a teacher. So hang on just one second. So are you a registered voter? I am a registered voter in Kennebunkport. I lived in Lebanon. I've taught in the district for 23 years, and I'm okay. currently a teacher at Noble Middle School. So, so, so hang on. I'm not be allowed to ask a question. Yeah, so in order to um, allow you to speak, we would have to take a vote. There has to be two-thirds majority in favor uh, of allowing that. Um, so um, I'm going to, uh, well, I'll, uh, yeah, um, so yelling doesn't, yelling doesn't do it. So, so I'm going uh, to call for a vote. This vote will allow, and I'm sorry, could you just say your name again, please? Um, Karina Chapman, I teach. Uh, Social studies uh, for the Karina Chapman to speak as a non resident. All in favor? <laughs> All right, thank you. And opposed? All right, that's definitely uh, two thirds. Please go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify the ed tech positions that were being cut. Um, I understand that there are three positions being cut at Noble Middle School. Um, but none of those are currently on the docket to be restored in any way. Is that correct? That's correct. correct. Okay. Then am I allowed to make a comment? You may make a Please. comment. Please. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I am concerned because as a teacher at the school, we already don't have enough ed techs. Um, sadly, they are often pulled to be elsewhere. I don't have any te ed techs in my classroom on a routine basis, and I'm sure I'm supposed to, and I'm sorry if I sound uh, jumpy, it's just because uh, these are my students. I love my kids, and they need to be supported, and they're not getting the support they need. And that bothers me and it worries me. I've taught in this district for 23 years, and my students deserve better than to have their supports cut. Thank you very much. The goal with reinstating three teaching positions to Noble Middle School is to address the learning in a comprehensive manner. So while I understand your concerns about the um, removal or elimination of those three ed tech positions, the board has, been, has committed to putting in funds to support teachers in those roles to offer supports. Okay, so the, uh, the motion has been called, so I'm going to uh, call for a vote. Uh, all in favor? All right, let, um, sorry, hang on just a second. So, um, we are, let me read, yeah, we're going to, I'm just, let me read, thank you, Sue. I'm going to read the article again, just so you know what you're voting on. Article number two, to see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for special education School board recommends $9,116,711. We've had a motion 
and we've had a second. So at this time, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please. Okay, um, I'm gonna call for uh, opposed. The motion carries, thank you. All right, article number three. To see what the sum the district will be authorized to expend for career and technical education, school board recommends $80,945. Do I hear a motion? Hear a motion? Do I see a second? second over here? Thank you. Discussion, please. Yes, sir. Could you please tell us what um, career and technical um, services are provided to our students and um, hopefully we can celebrate that. So the career and technical um, services or education is Stanford Regional Technical Center. These funds support our students. We have about 123 students that participate in 11th and 12th grade. Um, they go over to Sanford to the Technical Center every single day um, and for half their day. So we send half students in the morning, half in the afternoon. Uh, they participate in welding, um, a multitude of different, different things, automotive. Um, and we, we have a very robust, we're the second largest group that sends students in. Um, currently, 118 students have been accepted for next year. So. Thank you, Audrey. Any other discussion? Move the question. Question's been moved. Second. Yeah, we don't need a second. So we can just, you can just, uh, we don't need a second. All right, uh, at this time we'll call for a vote. All in favor? Okay, uh, opposed? <coughs> All right, motion passes. Thank you. Article number four. To see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for other instruction, school board recommends $1,213,829. Is there your motion? Move the school board's recommendation. And we have a motion and a second. Thank you. Discussion, please. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, I steal again. Um, maybe you could explain uh, briefly um, what that is. What What is, I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh, just, yeah, other instruction. So other instruction is athletics, um, co-curricular stipends, Benefits for medical and dental, professional development, coaching, um, ex traveling, um, roughing, all of those things. Yeah. Thank you, Audrey. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Move the question. Uh, I will uh, call for a vote. All in favor? Okay, and opposed. <clears throat> All right, the motion passes. Article number five. To see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for student and staff support. Do I hear a motion? <clears throat> All right, thank you. Motion, okay. second. <clears throat> Audrey, do you want to just uh, explain student and staff? <laughs> sure, so there's school counselors, um, social workers, our nursing staff, the district librarian, the library at techs that are working in the schools. Um, we also have the director of teaching and learning, professional development, which is, works with um, professional development for staff and teachers, um, community engagement, and like summer stipends for nursing and technology. Yeah. Thank you. And just in case I didn't say it, uh, school board recommends $4,950,228. So 
make sure I did that, uh, state that. Um, all right, any discussion? Um, so, you know, Facebook has all kinds of crazy things going around on it, of course, mm -hmm. and I'm here to get some facts, so that's great, thank you. And one of the things that I see here is that, you know, there's a lot of claims going around about how um, the support staff is being cut, and we've learned that some of that is true here through this past discussion, but here I see that there's a significant amount of increase related to the, where was it? I am looking for it here. Literacy and math coaches, thank you. So is that to help, like, how does that correlate? We've cut the positions elsewhere, but now we've got a $150,000 increase. So we, um, our math coaches were in one of our grants, so they were just moved back into the regular budget. And we have um, a half-time literacy coach and um, that's reflected in this line item as well. And that is not, these are not new positions moving ahead. These are positions that we've had. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay, great, thank you. Sure. Over here. Hello, I am Xavier Deflin from Noble Middle School um, in Berwick. And I wanted to speak about um, school guidance counselors because new, multiple of my peers and friends are suicidal and very depressive um, because of harsh conditions at school, and I think that it would be a really bad idea to cut guidance counselors or psychiatrists um, at all, just because of how much depression is an issue at the school. Thank you. Thank you. Getting cut, but I'm a little more. I'm, I'm wondering, like, why we're cutting the director of teaching and learning and um, nurses? Is like, is that only from Mary Heard, or because director of teaching and learning is going from forty-four thousand to three thousand? Right. That position is not being cut. It's being moved into a grant. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. And then for the nursing and stuff like that. Where? Which one? Right on the same first section of nursing staff. The staff development. And ed section. tech community engagement, health district health coordinator. Uh, so the district are, health coordinator is um, also we're looking at funds for a grant for that position. Um, I'm still I'm trying to figure out where, where the nursing one is that you were talking about. It's right about. underneath that. Oh, the stipends. Yeah. Okay. So that's actually that stipend piece is a combination of all of like. Um, extra for like summer school nursing things like that that's not being cut there's a piece in the professional development area that we were able to reduce by 12 so okay so this we're is always looking right. for ways to like, right. think of. okay we so are it's not removing yeah. like nursing no, staff no. No. and we are working um, with the Alfond grant which we received so that if, if you notice a lot of our professional development lines are going down it's not because we're offering less it's because that we're working um, in collaboration with accessing funds so that we can use some of those funds to help our professional development to help keep our budget okay. a little lower. Okay. Christy Hayes Deglin from Berwick. Um, like others, I'm a little bit unsure of how the, the money is being allocated. I see cuts, I see changes. Can you please clarify if there are positions um, around student and staff support, um, whether it be a guidance counselor or social workers or anything? that would fall within this uh, realm that are being cut or eliminated? Are we losing any of these uh, yeah. support staff? We're, we're not, we're just adding um, positions that came in from ESER. So under the social workers, there were two positions. Hang on, I'm sorry, were, you're just a little askew from the mic, I didn't quite hear that. We have two positions that we're adding that were in the ESER funds from COVID that are moving into the budget. Other than that, there are no, no counselors or social workers that have been cut. So just to clarify, no cuts. No cuts in this those two areas. All right, and does that change the staff to student ratio in any way? Is the staff to student ratio changing in any way? It's pretty much remaining the same. It's I remaining the same. It's actually probably going down because our enrollment's going down a little bit. So, thank yeah. you. Over here. Hi. Hi, my name is Xavier Duran from London. Uh, would would any band teachers be getting cut? No band, no band teacher cuts. Okay. 
park houses and whatever. I'm just wondering what the proposed lease for equipment and farm area is going to be. So the proposed uh, number, the, a budget amount for equipment? Right, you're looking for a uh, lease for 223 over. Uh, and you're looking for details on that? Yeah. Yes, thank you. That's um, a technology lease for the coming year. Technology lease for the coming year, is that uh, uh, PCs or something that I've done? Not a PC. No. <laughs> <laughs> she, thinks, she thinks I'm a... I'm a PC person. <laughs> It'll just be, be one minute. You're looking at it. No more PCs in my house. So it's a combination of keyless door portions, the firewall, iPads, Chromebooks, projectors, projectors cameras, security cameras. Thanks, Nancy. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay. I will call for a vote. And yeah, okay, well, thank you, Sue. Just to remind you of, of the, uh, the, what you're voting on. To see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for student and staff support, the school board recommends $4,950,228. All in favor? Okay, and opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Article number six. To see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for system administration, the school board recommends $1,474,877. Do I hear a motion? Motion here. Second, thank you. Discussion, please. Seeing no discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Okay, thank you. Opposed? All right, motion passes. Article number seven. To see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for school administration, school board recommends two million $623,551. Do I hear a motion? Hear a mo uh, motion and second, thank you. Discussion, please. Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, I'm Shelby Um, I see on here that there's an increase in principal, assistant principal, and dean wages of uh, almost $95,000. I'm just wondering if someone can clarify why there's that increase and we're cutting um, other positions. These are, these are contracted uh, salary agreements and it's across all of our schools and all of our administrators. So we're increasing wages for principals, deans, and vice principals, but we're cutting positions that, that work with students. Work, I just want to clarify that. And uh, yes, sure. So every position in this budget supports staff, librarians, nurses, teachers, educational technicians, drivers, custodians. Everybody has um, contracted wages that have increased. I, I just, I guess I'm just kind of wondering why there's such a larger increase in that budget line item as opposed to other ones. I think if you, if you look at some of the other line items, like regular instruction, you'll see that that is significant uh, as well because that's our entire teaching staff. So again, this is um, our principal's assistants and our deans. So this is that whole, our whole group, that whole group. Thank you, yes. 
Hi, my name is Xavier Durant, and uh, I know someone who brought in some pretty bad stuff to school. I'm not going to say who they are or what it is. And this isn't the first time they've been suspended. This is like their tenth, and they still haven't gotten expelled. So, so um, that's probably not a um, budget hearing topic. And what I would suggest um, you do is maybe talk to your uh, building principal. Is that a yes, good that's great. Thank, thank you. you. But thank you for bringing that up. Any more discussion? Let's see the people coming in. I'm Allison Harley from Berwick. Um, I'm wondering if you have the information of what's the average, um, kind of off your question, what is the average increase in salaries in the administration percentage wise um, versus the average increase to general instructors? The average increase to administration for next year is 3.25% um, for the educational technicians, transportation, um, technology. Um, Let's go transportation is 4%, educational technicians are 4%, other meaning uh, central office positions are 3%, uh, classroom and teachers are 7%. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, uh, Tom Walker, Irvin. Um, can you provide some clarification on the cuts in the clerical staff, please? Sure, so we have a retirement happening at the high school that's not being filled with a new position, that, so that's that position. And then Husby School, based on enrollment numbers, um, they're um, going down one as administrative assistant as well. Okay, cool, yeah. and can you also clarify the tuition reimbursement cut? Oh yeah, that's the alpha. Yeah. Yes. So we yeah. talked earlier about we're utilizing, sorry, we're utilizing outside funds to support our um, tuition reimbursement through the Alphon fund, and so we were able to take off some of it for here. For okay, thank so, you. So not on our local folks. Awesome, thank you. Hi, um, I just heard you say that the percent increase for, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but does it apply specifically to this line item of principals, assistant principals, and dean when you said it was three and a half percent? 3.25. 3.25, but this percent increase comes out to about 6.5. That in includes longevity as well. What does that mean? That means that there is, um, in, their, in the contract for staff, there's longevity line, so if you're in a uh, position for a certain period of time, you receive lot, some longevity. So that's, that's makes up the, that difference. Sure, sure, sure. And um, who writes the contracts and agrees upon those? The contract, there is an association, so the association works with administration and the school board to come up with the contract, so um, it gets worked through that time. Um, oftentimes it's a multi-year contract, it could be two years or three years. Next year we're negotiating with three associations or three contracts. Um, so if it's- is, three, it, is an association a union? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so, for example, it sounds like there might be principals, assistant principals and deans that because of their longevity are getting a six and a half or more percent increase in their pay. Am I understanding that correctly? It, yeah, it, it will vary based on their experience, yeah, how long they've been in district. Yeah, okay. Bus drivers are an issue for everybody. Canabunk uh, is trying to increase their salaries to 30 an hour, which is a big deal. Uh, increasing salaries sometimes is helpful in attracting new people, sometimes not. Bus drivers are thankless positions, um, from what I hear from most drivers and from my students who've ridden the buses. I don't know exactly how to move forward with this particular question, however, um, with the question of admin increased percentage in salary, I also, that the six point, I don't remember, 6.1 I think, maybe it was 6.5, but I did the math, but I didn't write that number down. 6.5. Um, the drivers are um, overall receiving approximately a 2% increase in their salary. Um, so first of all, are any bus driver positions being added? So, so um, that is the next article. Oh, I thought we were on drivers. 
No, I don't want to say that. I'm sorry. I wonder why we were talking about admin salaries so much, and I got confused. I'll come back. I was busy mathing. <laughs> All right. Any any other discussion? So, question's been moved. I'll restate the article. It's uh, it's been a uh, longer than normal night, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. <laughs> to see what sum, this is Article 7, to see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for school administration, school board recommends $2,623,551. I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please. All right, thank you. And opposed. Motion passes. All right, article number eight, and before we go to article eight, um, Denise, are you, uh, when we get to article 13? Yes, you, I'm ready. You, you're ready with the math, okay. Or at least you're ready so far. All right, article number eight, to see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for transportation and buses, school board recommends $3,807,933. Motion. Motion. Do I hear a second? Second. All right. Thank you. Discussion, please. Everything I said before. Well, I won't take the time to repeat it. However, um, so I also just about one more thing. We're looking at um, uh, six point. A uh, 6.5% increase in the director salary, um, but only a 2% increase in the salaries of bus drivers. Uh, two point something, I didn't write that point down, but regardless. Uh, my question is, are we adding any drivers or removing any drivers' uh, positions? We are not adding or decreasing drivers. We're having trouble getting drivers. As, as so, yes. you did this so eloquently, I don't know how to do it. But I would like to propose <laughs> that we add to the sum um, recommended by the school board an amount of $37,630 um, in the intent that it be used to increase driver salaries by 3%. So you're making uh, a motion for an amendment. Is that allowed? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm asking if we can please increase our driver salaries by 3%, which I know is up to school board discretion as to how that would be spent. Um, but given the fact that we have a 2% increase in driver salaries and a 6.5% increase in uh, transportation administration salaries, it seems like a fair and good thing because what we really, really need, in addition to an excellent transportation director, are some bus drivers. Um, so an increased salary would, number one, help with retention and probably instruction. So that's my proposal. $37,630 be added to the budget amount. Sorry, 37630 Yes, please. I believe my math is correct if somebody wants to check that. Um, but that was, where is the line of salary line? I'm all, all anxious now, so now I'm having trouble finding my spot. <laughs> Drivers. Last year, um, this particular fiscal year, it was $1,254,296. Uh, and I believe multiplied by 0 0.03, that comes out to approximately $37,630. I would be happy for someone to double check my math. But that would be a 3% additional increase in the salaries of our bus drivers. So we have a motion for an amendment. Do I hear a second? Second. A second? All right. I'm going to clarify that we discussion that the drivers are at 4% right now. Uh, some of the fluctuation that you see is based on the fact that we have drivers that have been here and have a lot of experience and some newer drivers that are not as high on the, on the scale as some other drivers, but we just looked at the numbers again and there are at 4%. Okay. Are, so are you good with your... So you can, um, since you made the amendment, you can... Uh, Withdraw your amendment and make another one if you'd like. And assuming the person who made who did the second is okay with that. Okay. All right. So the way that I'm calculating the percent increase is by taking the proposed increase 
which would be $23,561, no, $29,570, which I don't know which number it is, but $29,570 divided by $1,254,296 to see what the percent increase is. Yes? So that is the net increase. What you're not taking into effect is that we have different staff from fiscal 24 to 25, and they may sit higher or lower on the scale of pay. Understood. So if you have a driver at the top of the scale, uh, it will be different than the driver at the bottom of the scale. Understood. As with administration, we have an average increase of approximately 6.5%. Yep. My understanding is that some administrators will probably receive a 3% increase, whereas others may receive an 8% increase, and that those numbers are not consistent across the board for each administrator based on the contract, is that correct? Correct. It's so, an average. Right, so your average is right. That is the way you would calculate it. So I understand okay. where it comes from. So that the budget line item increase for increasing our director of transportation salary reflects an average salary for our transportation director increase of about 6.5%. And our line item increase for our bus drivers in reflects an increase in that budget line item of approximately 2%. Is that correct? Did that's, I that, that that's the number, that's the net increase for the year. Understanding that some, some drivers then are receiving a lower than 2% increase in their salary, because if 2% is the average increase, and we're neither adding nor removing positions. Um, so, are positions some not being increased because there are new, new positions coming on, or? Every driver is getting four, has budgeted a 4% increase, every driver. What is different is if you have a driver in fiscal 24 who leaves the district and is at the top of the scale, and we hire a driver for fiscal 25, we have an open position, and they're making bottom of the scale or middle of the scale, the, the net dollars will be less, even though the position itself will see the 4% increase. Understood. Okay, so if they're getting a 4% increase, and my intention was then to say, I would, suggest that they receive an increase equal to the transportation director approximately six percent okay so you want to add an additional two so then i would need to amend my number i don't know what that number is because i don't have a list of salaries in this paper in my head but i would like to recommend that the drivers receive the same percentage cost of living increase that our director recommend and uh that is a big math ask because um you know you, i don't know how your things are related but that's what i'd like to say i think that that the, our drivers recommend or deserve at least as much of a consideration of cost of increase, uh, cost of living, because again, driver salaries are thankless and it's a thankless position, as so many educating so, positions are. So let me just uh, ask, what is, the, we're going to have to come up with a number. So do, do you want to come back at me with a number, or do you want me just to pick a number and say I'd like to use it to increase driver salaries, because that could also include increased incoming salaries, um, which I think would be prudent. Uh, let me take a look. Uh, six and a half. Can I ask a question? Sure. Hi, Mike. Can we address the issue of union contract negotiations? I'm not quite sure how this would work. I can't. Hear the question was, uh, how could we address or clarify? Can I do a clarifying thing? Because I think I understand what you're trying to say. Is that okay? Is um, no, I don't mind pausing if it procedurally works. If it does not work procedurally, then I'll finish. So I'd, I'd like I'd like to not get us going. Yep, that's fine. Right. I just am trying to help because I think some of the <clears throat> things that are with the contract and how it works is getting a little confusing. Would be like someone who understands it. So something is kind of in the middle. I do understand how contracts work. Uh, no, I mean like work. the longevity piece. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so let's, if, if you don't mind. Yeah. I would like to uh, amend my amendment, which you're not supposed to amend it, propose a different amendment. So, so, yeah, so hang on. Uh, um, sorry, I'm sorry at that. Um, so the amendment, you withdrew your amendment, so you just need to make an amendment. Okay. I would like to amend, instead, an amount of um, two thirds of that. So I would like to uh, uh, offer an amendment to this amount in the amount of $25,000 added with the intent to increase driver salaries equally 
um, across the board by uh, approximately, I believe that's 2%. Uh, both the starting salaries for new drivers and the, you know, the, the existing salaries and, and for the board to decide how best to allot that in order to increase our driver retention and driver hiring. $25,000. All right, thank you. Do I hear a second on that amendment? All right, we have a second over here. Thank you. And now we're going to be, any discussion will be related to um, the amendment, which is to add twenty-five thousand dollars to Article Number Eight. Um, may I? You may. Okay, thank you. So, one of our board members, Peg Wheeler, um, her microphone isn't working, and I believe that I am going to address, I hope, her question or clarification. So, we do have different associations. Um, and should something um, come up as part of salary negotiations when there already is a contract and there is an association, that is something that um, would be very difficult to do. Currently, this, so this group, which are the bus drivers, the mechanics, they do not have a, um, an association at this point in time. They will um, in the fall. So um, I hope that addressed and clarified, Peg, your, yes. question, your comment. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And can I ask a question, Audrey? Can we use the word union instead? I think people are confused. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So the statement that just if um, I heard it, Peg, was uh, can we use the word union uh, when it versus talking about association just because I think that sounds like what everybody understands what a union is. And I see you nodding yes, Peg? Yes, thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. May I speak to, motion? I speak to motion? Um, the motion? Obviously, I'm all for bus drivers being paid more. Um, that's a, that's a no-brainer. Um, what they do is very difficult, and uh, it's hard to get a second job when you drive in the morning, and then you get a couple hours off, and then drive in the afternoon. That is really difficult for drivers. Um, I've spoken to a number of drivers, and I've spoken to our director um, about one of the difficulties, and, and I think it's important to say this here. The number one reason that they stop driving or don't drive for the district, and I've asked people to drive for the district, the number one reason is not to pay. The number one reason is student behavior. And I say that to a crowd of parents here because you guys can help. the salaries might just help a bit with the uh, driver retention and acquisition, which I know is probably does you point out that's they are as much as one might think, but it might still help with that problem. Thank you. And um, Mallory from Lebanon. I also teach in the district as well. Um, so we go. Okay. Um, so I think just a clarifying thing from the, do bus drivers also receive longevity when they receive the increases? So for example, just for clarification, like if I was to get an increase because I've been in the district for longer than 15 years, my percentage is because of my longevity is going to be higher even if everyone from the contract because my longevity is going to be a larger amount than someone who's only been in the district for Five, five years, six years, seven years, correct? So the same is for bus drivers as well, and having the longevity is a way to help keep bus drivers and have repeat, keep them coming back, correct? So that's why percentages would be the same across the board. <coughs> Thank you, just click. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, William Whalen of um, Berwick. Um, to actually piggyback off of what you were saying, sir, um, I would say I also work in transportation. I do not work in the school district. I work on the railroad. And I don't like my job. Nobody knows. Absolutely everyone on the railroad despises their job. It's awful. The biggest thing that keeps us there is pay. And in all honesty, when it comes down to it, as much as some of the things we deal with, I, I'm out of work right now because I almost lost my finger. It's luckily with a plastic surgeon, I actually still have another digit. I don't have to count as 9.75. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, if it wasn't for the increase of pay that we've been getting, 
uh, actually, even with that, we're still looking for other work, but it certainly helps. If we were to actually make an amount, and percentage-wise, actually, that um, I believe that we should be making, all of us would have stayed. All of us would be still there. Um, at this point, we probably lost about two-thirds of our employees, and the um, vast majority of it is pay and uh, benefits. They're just not matching what they should be with the increase of everything else that's going on. So if we can do something to keep the jobs as they are, and a lot of the confusion that we're having with all of this, with the budget work and so forth, because I'm not an accountant, and I'm willing to bet that most of the people here aren't either. We're just trying to understand what we can do to help people keep their jobs, um, either by increasing the budget or by, I mean, something else, if there's something else that's actually helping to pay for them besides the budget, awesome. Um, we really want to try and keep people's jobs going and help them also boost up their income with the fluctuation of everything increasing across the board. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hey guys, I apologize, I need to make a sign. It is 8 p.m. almost in the babysitting portion of the evening. Um, Sophie needs to leave, so you gotta go get your kids. <laughs> Yeah, are you calling the motion? Oh. Yeah, it's really tough. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to allow a question. Uh, not a question. I'd also like to add to the amendment. So, we're, we, can't, we can't amend the amendment. Oh, I'm okay. not going to amend it. Because so. the only thing I would want to say is let's also not cut medical and retirement. Oh. I don't know how we could add that into what was so, said, but... Um, so I can, I can speak to that. Yeah, please. Um, the, the, first first time, so. the, the medical is based on what people are actually okay. taking. Okay. So if new people have coverage with a spouse or something, that um, this actually reflects what the cost will be based on right now. So that, that it's a cut just means that somebody's family situation has changed. Um, similarly, um, for retirement, that's a calculation. It's a percentage based on wages. And so whoever participates in the retirement plan, um, that's factored into the budget so that it's a decrease is simply just who is taking advantage of those, of those things. Thanks for the certification. Okay. Thank you. All right, I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor? Yes, uh, yes sorry. Thank you. Good job. That was just a test. Um, so this is the, we're voting on the, um, the amendment. So we are um, amending the amount. Do you have the, did you do the? 25,000. And so that would make it 3832933 Again, that's with an additional $25,000 amendment. All right, so everybody clear on that? We're just, we're voting to amend the amount. I can't, we are, uh, the amendment is to add $25,000 to this article, which would make the total article $3,832,933. With the intent to increase driver's salary. Correct, with, with the intent to create uh, to increase the driver's salary. All right, now let's try it. All in favor for the amendment. All right, opposed? And. All right, motion passes. All right. Is there asking for a recount? Yeah. I'm sorry? Okay. If, if um, is there, could you please come to the, uh, the mic, please? Deborah Wilson from Lebanon. I would like an actual vote uh, on that motion, please. So is there, there needs to be seven, oh, sorry, um, 
prime process. Um, we'll do a um, we'll do another vote and we'll do a count. That was the second point. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All right. So we're voting on the amendment to add twenty-five thousand dollars to uh, the uh, total amount, which is going to make it. Three million eight hundred thirty-two thousand nine hundred thirty-three dollars. Again, this is the amendment. All in favor? The uh, motion passes. The uh, the vote is 168 to 69. Oh, excuse me, Six, 162 to 69 in favor. All right, that's the amendment. So now we're going to vote on the. Oh, sorry. So yes. So I guess any more discussion. Specialist, um, completely, we'll click maybe with that two of them. Is there, is there a pay cut? Like, what's happening with that $30,000 decrease? Midway through the year, we're going to have a shift in staff. Okay, and it's yeah. going to go from like two to one or something? It's, it's going to shift, yeah. It's a little premature for me to say that's oh, why. Okay. It's, a, it's a, an employment thing. So, okay. Yeah. So, this isn't like we're cutting someone, this is it, it just might change on because of other circumstances? We're, there's not a cut. Okay. <laughs> so the question was, are there any cuts? And the answer is no. Any more discussion? Questions been called. All right. Uh, I'll ask for a vote. We are voting on, on Article Number Nine. Excuse me, Eight. Sorry. <coughs> to see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for transportation and buses. The amount will be $3,832,933. All in favor? All right, opposed. Motion passes. All right, article number nine. To see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for facilities maintenance, school board recommends $6,503,195. Do I hear a motion? I hear a motion over here, second please. And a second, thank you. Any discussion? I'm Elizabeth Forks from Lebanon, and my question is just, um, is there any money in here that's allocated for the LES septic system? Has that been decided and addressed? I know that's been a complicated <coughs> issue. It has not yet been decided. The quote came in pro um, after the budget had been approved to move forward. 
Um, currently, we are pumping the leech field weekly. Yes, and it will be on the agenda for our future board meeting. Okay, thank you. Card I see quite a decrease in the capital investment project list. Can you tell me why? So a couple of things. We have some bigger projects coming in. One is coming in um, as the second question when you vote, and that's on the SRRF funds to um, work through some air um, upgrades for our air quality um, and ventilation systems. So that's one portion. Um, the other thing is, is that we worked really hard um, in collaboration with our um, maintenance department, um, with Kevin, who's head of facilities, just to talk through some of those items that absolutely need to be done now, what can we hold off on. So we do have a plan, um, a, a capital improvement plan that will go through some of those pieces. So we do have things that, um, you know, hit 26, fiscal year 26, 27, and on. So some of them are just being moved forward. Correct. Thank you. Correct. Hi, I'm Omi Forbes from LES, well, Lebanon. Um, I have a question about, are you deciding to close LES in the following years? That's a really good question. So if you look at our budget, um, in this section, there's a um, money set aside, a, a money set aside so we can do a study. And that study is going to look at all of the schools in the district, and it's going to look at how many students are in the school, how many classrooms are in the schools, how many staff are in the schools. And we also have to add a preschool at some point for our youngest students. So we're going to look at all of that. Um, and we're looking as part of that at Lebanon Elementary. So I can't say we're closing element, at Lebanon Elementary, but we're looking at all of our schools to see do we have the right numbers in the right places. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Audrey, um, that sounds like something that is, that would be a great um, participation opportunity for the community members as the board discusses that. As, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. So, good question. Any, any others? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, hang on one second. Um, is Lebanon Elementary shutting down due to um, mechanical issues or like other maintenance issues? As we just talked about, um, we are looking at all of our schools and we're going to make decisions about all of our schools. You know, like um, Lebanon Elementary, do we have the, do those students continue? Do our students continue in the school? Do they go to Hanson School? How's Hussey School? How's Knowlton School? How's the high school? How's the middle school? So we're looking at every, every building. But for right yeah. now, if your question is, not closing next no. next September is it closing? It sounds like the answer is it is it is not closing. Thank it's, you. You're welcome. All right, I'll uh, call for a vote now. All in favor? Uh, let me state the motion again. <laughs> this is this is a good thing because we generally don't have a whole lot of discussions. This is Article Nine to see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for facilities maintenance, school board recommended $6,503,195. All in favor? All right, and opposed. <coughs> Motion passes. <coughs> Article number 10 to see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for debt service and other commitments. The school board recommends zero dollars. To move the school board nomination. <laughs> <laughs> so Any discussion? Move the <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's vote. All in favor. Funny what happens after a couple hours. Yeah. <laughs>
And any opposed? <laughs> Motion passes. Article number 11. To see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for all other expenditures, school board recommends $25,000. Uh, motion and a second. Thank you. Discussion. All right. Seeing seeing none. I'll call for a vote. All in favor. All right. And opposed. Motion passes. All right, now we get into the, uh, the wordy articles. Um, so articles 12 and 13 raise funds for the proposed school budget. Article number 12, to see what sum the district will appropriate for the total cost of funding public education from kindergarten to grade 12 as described in the Essential Programs and Services Funding Act and to see what sum the district will raise and assess as each municipality's contribution to the total cost of funding public education from kindergarten to grade 12 as described in the Essential Programs and Services Funding Act in accordance with the main revised statutes, Title 20A, Section 15688. The recommended amounts set forth below are, and I'm going to uh, cover the uh, first, the total appropriated by municipality. Town of Berwick, $16,337,562. Town of Lebanon, $12,528,967. Is this the amended amount? Sorry? No. No, this is, so we'll, we'll get to that one. So we have a word. I'm just reading the article at the moment. So. That's why I said it's the word part. And Town of North Berwick, $8,656,582. So the total appropriated funds are $37,523,111. The total raised and district assessments by municipality. Town of Berwick, $6,378,022. Town of Lebanon, $5,110,909. Town of North Berwick, $4,839,851. So the total raised amount is $16,328,782. As an explanation, the district's contribution to the total cost of funding public education from kindergarten to grade 12 as described in the Essential Programs and Services Funding Act is the amount of money determined by state law to be the minimum amount that the district must raise and assess in order to receive the full amount of state dollars. As a note, the above appropriations are determined in accordance with the main revised statutes, Title 20-A, Section 1568 one the amounts to be raised reflect the cost-sharing formula under Private and Special Law 1967, Chapter 67, in accordance with the main revised statutes, Title 20-A, Section 1481-A-2. Do I hear a motion? I have a motion and I hear a second. Thank you. Discussion, please. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry. Um, John from all, uh, North Berwick. Um, <laughs> I'm confused, and so I'm hoping you can help me with that confusion. Um, these numbers listed here that we're about to vote on do not include the amendments to all of the articles. So when we vote on this, we'll be saying that this is the amount that we're going to uh, put to the voters. So an amendment. I can yes. go right ahead. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> Article 12 simply is addressing um, essential programs and services, so the, the state subsidy formula. 
And what they're saying is they've said, based on the formula, the cost of education for our students is 37,523,811. And the amount that we must pay as a district um, has to be at least 16,328,782. So this article, all it's saying is, um, the subsidy formula allots us 37 million. If we contribute the 16 million, they will put in the other 21 million. So that's all this is saying. For your, for the purposes of the amendments that we made earlier, the 300,000 and the 25,000, those need to be a motion in articles 13 and 14 to raise those additional funds for those purposes. Okay. <coughs> Any more discussion? Chip Harlan Levin, and it may not be more on 13 or 14, but why do those have to be made to, why do those have to be motions when it's already been approved prior? So in other words, those numbers, why aren't they just added with the new numbers to give us a new number there? Because so, yeah. Because those motions have already been made and passed. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a legal, the the articles that we raised were the expenses. These articles 13 and 14 deal with the revenue and assessing the towns. So it's the other side of the equation. We need to make sure that articles 13 and 14 cover all the expenses we've approved in the first 11 articles. And if your if your question is, it sounds like your question was more targeted at, at articles 13 and 14 versus article 12. Is, is that correct? Yeah. Um, yes. So the so we'll address articles thirteen and fourteen in a moment. Any more discussion on Article Twelve? And did you um, um, catch Denise's explanation? It's it's this is the state's formula. I'm sorry, did I? So the the question is. I'll, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please. Thank you. And opposed. Okay. Motion passes. All right. Article 13. This is going to be, um, uh, when we get to it, it'll be a written ballot. However, uh, a motion for an amendment is in order for Article 13, and do we have the do we have the amount? Uh, someone may need to make a motion to amend the number. I'll make a motion to amend the number. <laughs> By three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. By three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. <laughs> to be eight million. To be eight million. Four hundred twenty-six thousand. Four hundred twenty-six thousand. Seven hundred seventy-eight dollars. Seven hundred seventy-eight dollars. <laughs> no. So, so there is a uh, looks like fifty-eight cents. Um, yeah. Honestly, that's the only number that has pennies, so I'm going to drop it and you'll find the pennies. <laughs> So I have a motion, did I, did I hear a second? And I heard a second, all right. Um, and discussion. Okay. Um. <laughs> all right, since there hasn't been, technically hasn't been any discussion, I'm going to allow discussion before we call is there any way you can break it down by town the way you did in the previous article with the amendments for us? So, so is the question, what will each town, the full amount they will pay, the required amount, and the additional? I can give you that. So right now, we have voted on Article, article 12 um, in the amount of $16,328,782,000 to be raised by local funds for it. Yes. And um, above that, it's broken down by our cost sharing formula, 
between our three towns and what the share is in each town with the proposed amendments, what would that share then become in each town? Is that okay. Possible? Okay. So I'm going to give a bunch of information. Everybody ready? <laughs> the proposed amendments increase expenses, just expenses, by 9.04%. And after all of the revenue and income, it brings the total budget, it was previously 7.48%. It's going to be 8.9% to the taxpayers. That requires 24,755,560 dollars from all three towns. And that's broken down, Berwick, will be responsible for $9,669,522. Lebanon will be $7,748,490. Yep, Lebanon, uh, next year, with this revised number, will be $7,748,490. And North Berwick will be seven million three hundred thirty-seven thousand five hundred forty-eight. Now that is for just the school budget. In addition, there are allocations for adult education, but those are what you see in your book. Those do not change. I'm going to uh, ask for a, a vote. All in favor, please. Oh, sorry. So, um, so this is the amendment. Oh, okay. Um, so we're, we're okay, calling for a vote for to amend the article, um, and let me just read it as as it's going to be amended. Uh, and once we actually vote on the article, it'll be a written uh, a written vote. So, Article 13, uh, to see what sum the district will raise and appropriate and additional local funds, so now the recommended amount, or the amount, is 8426778 correct? Thanks. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, which exceeds the state essentials programs and services allocation model by Eight million four hundred twenty-six thousand seven hundred seventy-eight, as required to fund the budget recommended by the school board. So the school board recommends. Now, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm uh, not sure how we how we say this because it's not the school board's recommendation necessarily uh, for this amount because the school board was recommending eight million one hundred one. So. Um, yeah. Um, so let's just deal with the uh, th that amount, uh, or what I've said so far. So we're dealing with eight million four hundred twenty-six thousand seven hundred seventy-eight as the amended amount. And uh, I'll call for a vote on that now, please. All in favor? Okay. Okay. Thank you. And opposed. All right, motion passes. Sorry? This is 13, the amendment. Correct, because it's an amendment. All right. So, so uh, we're in the discussion phase. Are there any more questions? Yes, I have a question here. Just um, So the, the total amount uh, that we, we have to raise, local community, state, is 37 million. And I'm, I'm just paraphrasing, it's 37 million. And we're adding to it eight and a half million, but the actual budget that we're going to be approving is forty nine million. Can you just explain the gap? Okay. So the the state is giving us um, they are giving us the difference between the thirty seven million and the sixteen million. They are giving us an additional one hundred fifty thousand approximately because we belong to a regional service center. That total, those two total 21,344,78.
Um, we have so we have the 21344708, which is what the district will, I mean, what the state will pay. We have the required amount of 16328782, which is what the towns must pay in order to receive the state money. We are right now trying to approve the amount over the 37 million, which is 8 million. 426778. We are using two million two hundred ninety-three thousand one hundred ten dollars in fund balance, and we are expecting nine hundred thirty-three thousand four hundred nineteen dollars in miscellaneous revenues. And the total of that is the new budget total, forty-nine million three hundred twenty-six thousand. $797. Are you all set, Josh? Thank you. Okay, discussion, please. Yes, Deborah Wilson from Lebanon. And I'm sorry, I know our school board um, members, but I have no idea who is speaking or asking questions. Um, and I was just wondering when people on the board would speak if they would mind letting us know their name and what town they're from. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right, seeing none, we will now have the written ballot. So um, each town should um, go to your respective to clerk, clerks at the table. Uh, motion passes with the written ballot, uh, ballot uh, passed. In favor was 191, opposed was 27. All right, we'll move on. Article 14 summarizes the proposed school budget. So we need to... Ideally, somebody's willing to make a motion to... I'd like to make a motion to amend the number to $49,326,797. Second. 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 I didn't get the, the amount. Did you get the amount? <laughs> 49,326,797. 12 cents. 12 cents. <laughs> we'll find the 12 cents. <laughs> All right, we're here a second. Second. All right, thank you. Um, we're going to vote um, to, um, and, and let me read, uh, read the entire article. Uh, with the amended amount, and they're sort of voting on the amendment when we do when we do our, our analysis. To see what this is Article 14. To see what sum the district will authorize the school board to expend for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2024, and ending July 30, 2025, from the district's contribution to the total cost of funding public education from kindergarten to grade 12, as described in the Essential Programs and Services Funding Act, non-state funded school construction projects, additional local funds for school purposes under the main revised statutes, Title 20-A, Section 15690, unexpended balances, tuition receipts, state subsidy, and other receipts for the support of schools. So the uh, amount is 49 million $326,797. Uh, so, um, any discussion? Hi, my name is Robert Travers of Lebanon. I'm going to speak in opposition to this motion. So, last year, our budget was $45,237,883. With this amendment, 
we are looking at an increase of about a little over $4 million. So if we look at the bottom of the budget summary, our budget goes from 7.48%. With this amendment, it will go up to 8.5%. According to a report from the U.S. Labor Department, our inflation went up, was 3.5%. Our budget seeks to go two and a, almost two and a half times our current inflation rate. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Like to move the vote. So we've been asked to move the vote. All in favor. Is this coming? Sorry. And thank you, Denise. Sorry. Apologies. So this is to amend Article 14 uh, for an, an amount of $49,326,797. So we're voting on the amendment. All in favor. Okay, and opposed. Motion passes. All right. So that was the amendment. So now we're voting on the article as amended. And again, the amount is $49,326,797. Do I hear a motion? And, okay, motion and second, thank you. Any discussion? Did they, did they have discussion they wanted? <laughs> Seeing, uh, seeing no discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please. All right, thank you, and opposed. Motion passes, thank you. All right, Article 15, raises and appropriates funds for the school nutrition program. Article 15, uh, to see if the district will raise and appropriate zero dollars for the school nutrition program with authorization to expend any additional incidental or miscellaneous receipts in the interest and for the well-being of the school nutrition program. Are you a motion? Motion and second. Thank you. Um, comment on why it's zero? Yeah, that was about to be why it's zero. It's it self sustaining at this point. Yeah, at it's this self point. So, um, over the past few years, the school nutrition program has received um, some assistance from local groups like Full Plates, Full Potential to offset costs. They've had some ESER to offset costs. And the state has gone to the free uh, school lunch and breakfast for all students. So, with those things and with our current operating costs, we have a big fund balance. So in an effort to save taxpayers some money and you spend down some of that fund balance we need to spend, we are not asking for a dollar this year. We put a zero in to keep a placeholder. Okay, so this is not that we're spending zero on nutrition, it's just that we're not asking for more money. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? Open question. All right, I will call for a vote. All in favor, please. All right, and opposed. All right, thank you, motion passes. Article 17. Uh, sorry, 16. Article 16 authorizes the adult education program and raises the local share. Uh, to see, so Article 16 says, to see if the district will appropriate $293,981 for adult education and raise $90,265 as the local share, with authorization to expend any additional incidental or miscellaneous receipts in the interest and for the well-being of the adult education program. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Motion? Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? 
Yes, please. Hi, Deborah Wilson from Lebanon. There's just been an ongoing discussion uh, between myself and the people at NECE. Uh, we don't ever get any adult education in Lebanon. We get basket weaving and yoga with goats, and it, that's not working for me. Uh, sorry, but y'all yeah, know it's true. Uh, and uh, we, we just keep asking for adult education classes, and the answer keeps uh, saying that they don't have the facilities, um, in Lebanon to offer some of the classes where they don't have um, teachers, uh, adult education teachers willing to travel to Lebanon. But if we're paying, you know, like a large amount of money for uh, adult education, uh, I would, hopefully that they could start locating some teachers that lived in Lebanon or were willing to come to Lebanon for adult education. <laughs> Uh, no, we have some in Lebanon. We have um, sewing classes. We have quilting. Um, some seasonal things. I think they did wreaths and so forth at Christmas time. So there are classes uh, in Lebanon. Great. That's why That's why. Come on, Nancy. Is Kaylee Kimberwick? Isn't the actual adult education like GEDs and stuff like that here at the high school? So exactly. like, because oh, so is this for all anything community education for adults? But more specifically, isn't like I think what that lady is asking for that kind of stuff happens for the entire district here at the high school and at other schools in Berwick and Whitewater. So there's something separate other than the adult ed here at Noble High School, but like in North Berwick, but not in London. The student academic portion is here at the high school. So there are um, branches in, in, in Richmond and uh, in the other schools. Yes, yeah, I remember community adult mm -hmm. like through the yes. Berwick Library for mm -hmm. or whatever. But so the, the actual like academic piece yes, is yes. all here at the yes. high school. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any any other questions? All right. Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor, please. And opposed. Motion passes. All right. Article 17 authorizes expenditures of grants and other receipts. So, specifically, the, or, uh, Article 17. In addition to amounts approved in the preceding articles, shall the school board be authorized to expend such other sums as may be received from federal or state grants or programs or other sources during the fiscal year for school and other program purposes, provided that such grants, programs, or other sources do not require the expenditure of other funds not previously appropriated. So moved. A motion second. and a second, thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Thank you, and opposed. Motion passes. All right. So that um, concludes our warrant articles. Sue, do you have something you'd like to do? Um, so if you are looking at your booklet, there is a sample ballot on the back, which is just a reminder that this is the first, um, this is the piece where we're looking at the um, school revolving re renovation fund, where we're looking for some funds to support the HVAC systems and the upgrades throughout the district. So we definitely would like you to make sure that you take a peek at that. The other thing is, is a reminder, this is a first step in a two-step process. Um, so last year at this meeting, we had 67 people. So thank you for showing up tonight. Um, and honestly, I don't know that I've, I've been sort of in this role for a long time, and I've not seen this level of support from our towns 
yet. So I've had, I, I remember a few days back in the years of Paul Android and I, and there was maybe 150 people in the room. This was fabulous, and we appreciate it in such, it's so much more than you'll ever know. It's really important for you to be here and to express your pluses and your minuses. It's all good. Um, so this is the first step in our process. On June 11th, we need you to go to the, to the booth and vote. Um, it's really important for you to just keep expressing you know, how you feel and what you want to do. Um, and the other piece is on that ballot, there will be that second piece about the SS SRRF funds. Um, we are able to utilize some funds that are supported through the state of Maine that will um, be able to make some major renovations for some of our schools in terms of the HVA systems and that piece. It would be very helpful for us if we were able to pass that bond. So there it is. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you very much. And we have a question, Chip? Yeah, on that question on the, on the, the SLC, yeah. um, the first payment would be next year? On the, the first payment is actually... Is that all the <laughs> that budget? The first payment will be due a year after the project is complete. The project should be complete in September of 25. So we are looking anywhere from fiscal 26 to fiscal 27 for that first payment. Um, and just in summary, uh, again, that bond will give us $3.6 million as free from the state toward this project. $2.6 million will be at 0% interest paid back over 10 years. And about $356,000 will have to finance. Um, but that, those are great. That's a great deal. All right. You guys are the last people standing. Good job. Uh, think about it. This room is probably double the numbers that were here tonight. So, questions? Sean Works in Northbrook. I just want to thank everyone, all the board members, the administration, the volunteers, and everyone that came out to vote. Thank you all very much. All right, uh, so just to add to what uh, Sue said, this is part one, um, all the hard work that um, you went into adding to the budget, now, you, now it needs to get passed. So you and a lot of your friends need to get out and uh, make sure the budget passes. So, yeah. All right, second, all in favor? Anybody want to add?